Hello everybody, John Finn here with Supernatural House Church with another uh, tidbit, a little bit of teaching here about what it is to be a follower of Jesus, what, what he's talking about. And in this case, I'm asking the question, I went the extra mile, I walked the extra mile, can I quit now? And it all goes back to eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, which has been totally misunderstood and misrepresented even to our day. And so, you know, you all know the story. Jesus is talking about in Matthew chapter 5, I think starting about verse 38. He said, you've heard it said of old time, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But I say to you that you turn the other cheek, that you walk the extra mile, that you, if they take away your coat, that you give your, your jacket as well. And uh, that has led to our whole culture, I think, of, of Christians being doormats and not understanding. Thinking, okay, I turn the other cheek and they just keep hitting me. But Jesus is always correcting the traditions of men. He's always correcting religious traditions. And when he says in Matthew chapter 5, and I think it is verse 38, uh, starting with verse 38, um, you know, you have heard it said of old time. In fact, he says that phrase twice within about eight verses. Uh, he's talking about the traditions of men, the religion of men. And the actual first use, you know, what Jesus does is he tries to reset their understanding back to the original intent, the original scripture, and to get rid of the religion of men. And that's what I'm attempting to do here. In Exodus 21 and 22, those are the chapters relating to the laws of restitution. We're going to see that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is not revenge, but rather it's restitution. For instance, in Exodus 21, um, starting in verse, I think it's 22, let me say I wrote a note here, yeah, 22, I think it is, through 25, that's the very first use of eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And the Lord is giving hypothetical situations to Moses to, to try to understand eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth is restitution, not revenge. And he says, for instance, if two men are fighting and there's a pregnant woman nearby and she becomes injured in the fight, uh, as, a, as an innocent bystander, and so that she either delivers premature, prematurely, uh, a pregnant woman either pre delivers prematurely or suffers a miscarriage, then the man who injured her will restore to her, depending on the fine or the punishment that the husband and the judges determine, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, uh, foot for foot, etc., etc., and so the original first context is in Exodus 21, verses 22 through 25, where he's talking about a man who inadvertently injures uh, a pregnant woman as he is fighting, and he has to, he has to pay for uh, the damage that he did, either to the, the unborn child or to the woman or both, you know. And so, in fact, by the way, this is a little, this is the first scripture where we have definitively uh, that the Lord uh, in, uh, in, um, the Lord understands life in the womb as life and not just a, a, a mass growing or something. It's Exodus 21, verses 22 through 25, because he talks about uh, the life departing from her and how the man would have to restore life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, depending on whether it was a death or an injury or whatever. And it goes on to say there in Exodus 22, 21 and 22, one of the other laws of restitution, it says if a man digs a pit and then his neighbor's ox falls into it and injures himself, then the man has to restore either ox for ox, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, horn for horn, hoof for hoof. And so all of Exodus 21, 22, it goes into Leviticus 15, I think, and elsewhere, it's all about restitution, not revenge. So when Jesus is talking in Matthew 5, he said, you've heard it said of old time. In other words, he said, this has been the tradition for a long time, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But he's saying this, he says, I want you to turn the other cheek, walk the extra mile, give your extra coat. Now, he's referring to three separate cultural things, uh, truths of that time. And let me, let me share these with you. Um, you know, some of you have seen probably the old movies uh, set back in the nights of the round table and everything, and somebody's dishonored, and they, would, they will slap, they'll take off their glove and slap them on the face and show the dishonor. Uh, that way, you have even into the 17 and 1800s, you know, with duels being fought and sword fights and everything else, because, you know, some man will slap another because his honor has been attacked and someone has, has scandalized him and his good name. And so this goes all the way back to the Middle Eastern culture. There was actually court precedents, uh, a common court, especially for misdemeanors and, and disputes between neighbors. And turn the other cheek actually was such that a judge would rule. Uh, let's say Joe is suing Bob because Bob spread a nasty rumor about him and damaged his fish business. And so Joe takes him to court. Well, the judge could say, Bob, you owe him 50 shekels and, and you not only for the damage to his business, but he gets to slap you on the face as well. So 50 shekels and a slap on the face was, was you know, a common thing in the court system back then. And so 
<clears throat> when Jesus says, I want you to turn the other cheek, he's talking about that you are so eager to make it right, that, that, you, know, that, that you are the one that has done wrong, you pay your 50 shekels, you turn the other cheek, and you were so eager to make it right with Joe that you say, hey, I am so sorry I did this. Go ahead and hit me on the other side. If it'll make it right between us, if it'll restore our relationship, go ahead and do that. That's what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about restitution going back to Exodus 21 and 25, or 21 and 22. He's talking about how you have to make it right for the damage that you did. Now, walk an extra mile is another case. It started back with the Persians. And, uh, it, it, you know, the Persian Empire was much larger than the Babylonian Empire, and it, it was adopted by the Greeks and the Romans, each with successively larger empires. And it was such that when a messenger went out from an official, whether it be the king or a governor or whatever the case was, a messenger would go out by horseback, by donkey, by camel. And the law was such that that messenger could borrow any citizen's animal once his animal got tired, he could borrow any citizen's animal to help him further along in his assignment to deliver a message. And so that's where that compelling to walk one mile comes from. The law also said the owner of the animal had the right to accompany the messenger so that he could retrieve his animal. So the Lord says when you are compelled to go one mile, then go an extra mile. In other words, what he's saying is you've gone the one mile. And, but make sure everything is so right between you and that messenger that you'll go that extra mile just to make sure you're on good terms and, and you're, you've done fully your job. You see, and I, the other point I want to bring out is when he says turn the other cheek, that's so eager to make it right. You're, it's restitution and, and walk that extra mile. You want to make sure things are right. He's also placing limits. He's saying don't become a punching bag and don't walk five miles. He's placing limits on the amount of restitution, the amount of love that you have to walk in with that person before that person then takes responsibility. It's like you could t go with that ex that messenger one extra mile, but after that, it's like, hey, sir, lieutenant, you're on your own. I've got to return home. I've got crops. I've got a wife. I've got kids expecting me. And no matter how they would say, oh, please go again. No, you can you can say, no, I'm sorry. I've got I've gone that extra mile. You know, everything's right between us. I've done my part. I've got to return home. Similar situation with the take the cloak. It's a, it's, you know, Jesus flat out said in Matthew 5, 38 through the end of the chapter, he said, if somebody sues you and takes away your outer coat, then give to him your inner also. And, and that was again, because in both those situations, the slap with the cheek and the coat, he's saying, he's talking to Peter and James and John and Matthew. He says, you guys may be sued and may be found guilty if that is the case then you make it so right that you want to restore whatever you've done wrong. You make it right that you, you will turn the other cheek, you will walk that extra mile, you will not only give your parka, but you'll give your jacket too, if that will make it right between you and whoever you've offended. And, and so we go on, and, and again, I want you to see the limits, uh, the limits here. It's like you don't have to give your whole wardrobe, you don't have to walk a marathon, and you don't have to walk... Uh, or, you know, you don't have to become a punching bag. Walking in love means at some point you walk that extra mile and then you say, okay, you're on your own. Now, Jesus goes on to say, he's, that's why he goes on to say, he says, you've heard it said, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. He said, but I tell you to love your enemies, to bless those who curse you, to do good to those who use you and persecute you so that you can become like your father who's in heaven who causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust and the rain to fall on the just and unjust. You've got to be perfect. You've got to be mature. You've got to be complete is what that last verse of Matthew 5 says, as your father in heaven. So he's talking about love and he's talking about how there are limits to the love that you extend a person. Let me give you an example. We had a, a lady years ago, uh, back when Barb was pregnant with Chris, our first son, and uh, she was somebody I worked with and she was having a rough time and we volunteered to uh, let her stay for a week in our spare bedroom until she got on her feet. Well, one week turned into two and two weeks turned into three and she never could quite get on her feet, quote unquote. And pretty soon, you know, Barb is getting more, you know, larger and larger with Chris and the baby's coming and we need that room and six weeks, well, five weeks have gone by because at some point Barb said, basically, John, it's me or her. What do you want here? She's got to leave our house now. And so, you know what? I gave her a week. We gave her a week to, to find another place. And do you know what? She found another place. But if we had never said anything, then she would have probably still be staying there today. <laughs> and so when he says walk the extra mile, walk one mile, but don't walk two. Turn the other cheek, but don't be a punching bag. And, and give your coat, but don't give your whole wardrobe. Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth has to do with right living that our character, our our integrity, our walk of love is supposed to extend to another person, but at some point they have to step up and they have to do what's right as well.
All right, God bless you again. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. You've walked that extra mile. It's restitution. It's making sure, being eager to make sure things are right. But you can only do so much. And Jesus here in Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through the end, is placing a limit on it and say, walk the mile, but don't go. You know, walk the extra mile, but don't go on a marathon with them. All right, you can feel good about that. Bless you. That's the word. And uh, I pray this has been a blessing to you today. Bye-bye.